Make life worth living. The title of this morning's message is to live, to die, or to remain. To live, to die, or to remain. That's the question. Because a lot of people are living. Some people want to die, and some people are just kind of remaining, and they don't really know why. That's not God's will for his people. That's not his will for you. That's not his will for me. We have to look into this question. See what the Word of God says. Note, if you will, point number one, what did Paul teach us? To live is Christ. That's living. To live is Christ. Look at verse 19. For I know that this will turn out for my deliverance through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. So, we must understand that verse 19 teaches us you must have the supply of the Spirit of Christ if you are to live in Christ. And if you are to truly live, you've got to have the supply of the Spirit. That's what Paul said in verse 19. For I know this will turn out for my deliverance through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. Do you know you have to get the supply of the Spirit? Are we tapped in as the supply, the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ? How does that happen? What does that look like in our lives? Paul said, look, I want you to pray this for me. I want you to pray. I know that you're praying this, your prayer, and it's going to supply the Spirit of Jesus Christ. What is it to live in Christ? We hear that verse, we memorize that verse. To live is Christ. What does that look like? Look, if you will, in your outline in Galatians 2.20. Paul said in Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ. And it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life for which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. This is what it is to have the supply of the Spirit of Christ. Look carefully at Galatians 2.20 again. The Apostle Paul said, I have been crucified with Christ. What does that mean? He's died to himself. He's died to himself. I've been crucified with Christ. My old fleshly nature, my old desires, the old man has been crucified or died with Christ. I have been crucified with Christ. I put to death the old man. I have been crucified with Christ. And it is no longer I who live. I'm not living anymore. My old self's not living anymore. My old flesh, my old carnal nature is not alive anymore. But who is alive? But Christ is alive and He lives in me. Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, in other words, in this human body, on this earth, the life which I now live in the flesh, I'm living by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. So Paul said to live in Christ, to live is Christ, it simply means you crucify your old self, you crucify your old desires, and you live by faith in the Son of God. And you ask the Son of God to supply you with His Spirit every day. Every day. And remember I told you a few weeks ago, do you remember this? It is not true. It is not true that you say, well, I've accepted Christ and now I can put my faith in cruise control and I can just glide on through life and not worry about my flesh, not worry about praying that the Spirit would what live within me and through me, the Spirit of Christ would live in and through me every day. That is not true. We have to continue to sanctify ourselves daily. We have to continue to crucify our flesh daily. We have to continue to live and ask and pray for God to supply us with the Spirit of Christ every day. That's what Paul's talking about. The supply of the Spirit of Christ. And is it an endless supply? Yes, it's endless. You say, well, Pastor, I seem not to have it. What do I need to do? What does Paul say? For I know that this will turn out for my deliverance through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit. You have to pray for it, brothers and sisters. You have to pray for it. You have to ask 
Jesus Christ to supply you with his spirit. Isn't this what Jesus talked about in John chapter 15? When he said what? What did Jesus say? I am the vine, you are the branches. Abide in me, and I must abide in you. For without me, you can do nothing. If you want to bear fruit, what do you have to do? Abide in the Bible. What is a vine, what is a vine supply? Life, nourishment to the branches. You see, the supply of the Spirit of Christ. You see how this all goes together? What Jesus said in John 15, what Paul's saying here in, in Philippians chapter 1, what Paul says in Galatians chapter 2, it all goes together. And we are very, very foolish if we believe that we can just live our lives on cruise control and say, well, Lord, I, I've surrendered to Christ. I, I, I've asked repentance. I've repented of my sins and I've forgiven some of my sins and I've submitted to Christ at one time, way back when, and that's all I need. Brothers and sisters, we've got to pray daily for the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. And when we receive that, we're going to be like Paul in verse 20. We're going to seek to glorify and magnify Christ. Look at verse 20. According to my earnest expectation and hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed. Let's stop right there. What's Paul talking about? Is he talking about, well, I, I, I hope that I've got expectation that I won't be embarrassed when I stand before the Romans and testify of Christ. Is that what the word ashamed means? No, it means to stumble, to fail. Paul's praying, you know, according to my earnest expectation and hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed or I will stumble or I will fail Christ. But instead, with all boldness as always, so now also Christ will be magnified in my body. Magnified in my body. Whether by life or by death. Paul's saying it really doesn't matter to me. If I die, I pray that I will be as bold and as confident when I draw my last breath on this earth to testify and magnify Jesus Christ to the Romans, to the man who's executed me, to Nero Caesar, whoever is watching or listening. I pray that my last breath, whether I die or whether I live, I'm going to continue to magnify Christ. Is that simple? Because why? To me, to live is Christ. That's living. That's really living. To live is Christ. If you don't live with the supply of Jesus Christ, and if you don't live to magnify Jesus Christ, to glorify Christ, are you truly living? Are you truly living? According to the Bible, you're not. If you're living for yourself, if you're living for an agenda, if you're living for a cause outside of Jesus Christ, you're not really living at all. I wonder if this could be a reason why so many people are contemplating suicide and saying to themselves, I don't think life's worth living. I don't know what the purpose of life is. Life has no meaning to me anymore. They don't understand a biblical worldview. Christians should. To live is Christ. To live is Christ. And I'm going to glorify Christ in my body, whether by life or by death. Paul's saying, living is Christ. Living is Christ. And I'm going to magnify, I'm going to glorify Christ in everything, everywhere I go, every person I talk to, everything I do, I'm going to glorify and magnify Christ. That's my life. That's my purpose. Paul understood things rather well, did he not? He knew what true living really was. He really understood it. He really understood it. But I'm convinced so many people don't. So many Christians really struggle with this. What does it really mean to live? What's the purpose of life? What's my purpose? There's been books to be written about it, right? The purpose-driven life and others. Some of them are good, some of them not so good. But really, we have the answers right here in Scripture. To live is Christ. To live is Christ. And then Paul switches gears a little bit. And he says this in verse 21. And to die is gain. To die is gain. Fill that in point. Point number two. To die is gain. 
Now you know this verse very well. I don't want to ask you something. Have we got it maybe a little bit reversed in American culture today? You know, to live is Christ and to die is gain. But I've attended a lot of funerals. And I've preached quite a few of them. And I wonder. Just want to ask you something. I'm wondering, are you on the way? Are we getting this reversed? And are we saying in our American culture, to live is gain. To live is gain. And to die is Christ. Sometimes I wonder that. To live is gain. To live is gain for me. To live is my time to get what I want and everything I can. To live is gain. And then when I die, and everything's over with, well, then, then I'll, then I'll what? I'll grab on to Christ. I'll grab on to Christ there as the final effort in my life. Right after I've got all the gain I can get, I'll reach out my hand and I'll say, all right, Christ, take me home. My life, my life is over. To live is gain. Then when I die, hopefully Christ will take me home. Do we have it reversed? Because I tell you, I've heard some funerals. I've been part of, you ever been to a funeral where it's all about the person? All about their gains in life? All about their accomplishments in life? Now we sit, we listen respectfully, but we do really think about that. Where the pastor, the preacher, the, the rabbi, the imam, whoever, sets up before people and he talks an hour about the person's life. What they gained. What they did. What they accomplished. But Christ is just mentioned this kind of an afterthought. Oh, by the way, you might want to think about eternity and after your life is over, you might want to have a free get to heaven card. I'll tell you something. I always see, and I sometimes I fail. But my goal is always to magnify Christ when I preach to you. And I hope it's your goal too. Even in your death. I told Sheila, I told Cassie and Keith and Carrie, I hope you tell your children. You know what I told them? I said, when my it, I don't want no secular songs played. I like some secular music. But I don't want secular songs play. My taste in music is very... I like John Denver, some of his songs. I like some of Charlie Daniels' songs. I even like a little bit of CCR now and then. But you're not going to play those in my funeral. They're not going to be played. You know why? Because it's not about me. It's not about my life. I want Christ to be magnified to be exalted, even at my funeral. I want whoever it is, and hopefully it will be a young whippersnapper of about 45 at that time, because I'll be, what, 80-some, or 90-some, or 100-some, right? I'm going to live a long time, but it's going to be a young whippersnapper of 45 exalting Christ in my funeral. I want to talk about Christ. I want to say, if there's anything Wes Belcher accomplished in his life, well, he sought to glorify and he sought to obey Jesus Christ. The best that he could. He wasn't perfect, but he did the best that he could. I don't want people to talk about my game. Oh, the best culture, he lived his life and he gained this and he did that. No. To live is Christ. To live is Christ. And dying is really good. What did Paul mean by that? What did Paul mean that? Dying is gain. Was Paul saying, well, you know, it really stinks to be in prison. I really hate this Roman jail cell. I, I hate being chained to the guards. It really, really is bad to be here in prison. And it really, really is not easy to be an apostle of Jesus Christ these days. So to die, I just want to finally escape. You know, many people commit suicide because they think it's going to be a final escape. I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to hit the what? Escape button, and I'll be gone. That's not what Paul was talking about. He has a little bit of soliloquy. Did I impress you with that word? Yes. Thank you. Let me say it again. Soliloquy. 
<laughs> I learned it on Andy Griffith's show, by the way. You ever seen that episode? Yeah. Andy is telling Opie a story about Romeo and Juliet, you know. He said he had a soliloquy, and Opie's like, what's that, Pop? And Andy says, well, when people stare off into space, way far off, and they begin to talk to themselves. People did that a whole lot back then. Paul's having a soliloquy here. Okay? Maybe he's staring off into space, but he's not doing it like Romeo did. He's doing it to reflect on his life. Paul's reflecting here. He's thinking. Look what he says in verse 22. But if I live on in the flesh, this will mean fruit from my labor. Yet what I shall choose, I cannot tell. For I am hard pressed between the two. In other words, I'm having a hard time deciding here. I have a desire to part and be with Christ, which is far better. You know what Paul's saying? He's saying, look, if I live on in the flesh, it's going to mean fruit from my labor. What do you mean by fruit from his labor? He simply means I am going to bear, be able to bear fruit for Jesus Christ and his kingdom. If I live on, I'm going to be able to write some more epistles, preach some more sermons, share Christ crucified, and I'm going to bear fruit for the kingdom of God. That's a good thing. You know what else? I'm going to be able to store up for myself some treasure in heaven. Didn't Jesus talk about that? Yeah, didn't Jesus say store up for yourselves treasures in heaven? In other words, be proactive about this? Paul understood it. Paul understood it. He's saying, you know what? If I continue on the flesh, it's going to mean fruit for my labor. But you know what? I'm kind of hard pressed because i got a strong desire to part and really be with Christ, which is a whole lot better. So what Paul's saying is, is you know, he kind of convinced himself, I'd rather just depart, I'd rather die and be with Christ, not to escape reality, but to go to reality. Because reality is Christ. In other words, Paul's saying, I want to see Christ, I want to worship Christ, I want to experience Christ in all of his fullness. All of his glory. I don't want my flesh. I don't want my flesh separating me from Christ. I don't want this fallen world separating me from Christ. I am sick and tired of Satan and the demonic forces always assaulting me and always a thorn in my flesh. I am sick. I want to experience Christ. I want to gain Christ in all of his forms. That's what Paul's saying. I want to gain Christ and exalt him and glorify him forever in heaven. That's what Paul said. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. And I'm hard pressed between two. I just, I don't know which one I want to do. But then he remembers something that makes his decision for him. You know what Paul remembers? Look at verse 24. Nevertheless, Paul says, nevertheless, he makes his decision. Nevertheless, to remain in the flesh is more needful for you. See that? To remain in the flesh is more needful for you. Oh. You mean there's other people involved? There's other people on the planet? It's not about me. What did Toby Keith say? I want to talk about me. I want to talk about I. I want to talk about number one. Oh, my, me, my. What I think, what I like, what I know, what I want, what I see. Right? <laughs> Give me an applause for that. I won't sing. I'll, I'll sing. Now, thanks, Master. That song stuck in my head. Start singing Amazing Grace. It'll help. <laughs> But that's secular humanism. You get that secular in that it's, that has nothing to do with God. Nothing to do with religion. It's secular and it's humanistic. It exalts humanity. It exalts us, right? We. It's kind of like what? The wisest man except for Jesus Christ, of course, who ever lived. Who's that? King Solomon. What book did he write? Ecclesiastes. Remember that in the Bible? You may read Ecclesiastes. You may think, what in the world is wrong with this guy? He cries out, vanity of vanities. All is vanity, says the preacher. What's well, I've tried everything in life. I've built vineyards, I've built towers, I've built kingdoms, I've had I don't know how many wives, and I've tried everything in life, but nothing brings me satisfaction. Yeah. 
Because when it's all about you, when it's all about me, you know what? Life's really not worth it. When it's all about us, is that really a life worth it? Paul says, you know what? For me to live is Christ, and if I die, I gain Christ. But you know what? I, I don't know really which one I'd rather have. I'd rather be with Christ, I think. Yeah, that's what I'd choose. But nevertheless, to remain in flesh is more needful for you. And look at this. Verse 25. I'm confident of this. Paul said, I'm confident. I'm sure about this. I know that I shall remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy of faith. I know that I shall remain and continue with you all for whose progress? The church's progress. Other Christians' progress. Their, your progress and joy of faith. In other words, I can help you. I want to help you. God wants me to help you. And to remain in the flesh, to remain on this earth, you know what? I am confident. I know that I'm going to remain and I'm going to continue with you because God wants you to progress. And He wants you to be joyful in your faith. That your rejoicing for me may be more abundant in Jesus Christ by my coming to you again. Joy, rejoicing, and progress. Paul's saying that's what you need. So it's not all about me. It's about you. It's about Christ. It's about the kingdom of God. That's what makes life worth living. <clears throat> so what is the title of this morning's message? To live, to die, or to remain? Well, if we look at verse 21 for a minute, you know what? If we to live is Christ, if we live in Christ, are we living? Are we really living? Church, if we live in Christ, are we really living? Yes. And if we die in Christ, what are we gaining? Everything. Everything. Christ in His fullness. Everything. We're co heirs of Christ. We gain everything when we die. But to remain and fulfill, fulfill the wonderful, righteous work that God has already planned for us. Ephesians chapter 2. Right? We are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God has ordained before even the foundation of the world. We stay and we remain. We walk in the good works to produce fruit. That glorifies Christ's kingdom. And we wait for God to take us off. When God chooses to take us off, when our work is done, we gain Christ. You wouldn't want to shortcut all that, would you? You wouldn't want to Full of blood on God's plan, would you? Would you want to stand before God and have to answer for that? You want to stand before God and say, Well, for me, living wasn't worth it. Dying seemed like a way of escape. And I didn't care about anybody else. And I think suicide is one of the most selfish and cowardly acts anybody could ever do. Think about it. What brokenness, what terrible, terrible carnage you leave behind when you take your own life. What a horrible thing. It's an act of cowardice and, and complete and total selfishness. And also reflects, what, a life that really wasn't living for Christ? For his sin? For his king? Got a homework assignment for you. Look up how many suicides there are in the Bible. Old New Testament. Look it up. And 
then research the circumstances and the people involved. Do that. I don't give you the answers. I want you to research them. How many suicides are there in the Bible and the circumstances behind them? <coughs> and the people involved. To live, to die, or to remain. What's the example that Jesus Christ gives us? What did he live for? To do the will of the Father. You read the four Gospels. You know why Jesus Christ lived? To do the will of the Father. To live for Christ was to live for the Father and His will. What did we just learn this morning? To live for us, to live is Christ. It's to do His will. To accomplish His will. And magnify and glorify His name. What did Jesus, what did Jesus say about God the Father? To glorify His name. I want to do my Father's will and glorify it. That's why he prayed right before he went to the cross. Father, glorify your name. That was Christ's mission, was it not? That's what he lived for. Why did he die? For our day. You ever thought about that? He lived to do the Father's will. He died for our day. He died so that we could Right? He died to fulfill the Father's perfect plan of redemption, of salvation. Is He remaining with us now? He's with us. He's remaining. Why? For our joy and our progress and faith. What would you do without Christ? What if he wasn't with you? What if after his, his, his glorious resurrection, what if he just sitting in the heaven and sitting down right in the Father and say, okay, my work's done. Good luck down there. Hope it works out for you. Is that what he did? What did Jesus say in Matthew chapter 28? Lo, I am with you even to the end of the He's still remaining. You tired? I'm tired. Can I get an amen? I'm tired. <laughs> but I'm looking unto Jesus. I want to sit down. Take a break for about a decade or two. Let the world go by. But Red County, West Virginia looks really nice. You get a trailer. You too. I could probably get one for about $300 a month. <laughs> well, not much of a trailer, but, you know, it'd be a place to live. Yeah. Just let this world go on for decades. God's people will be all right, I think. I guess, you know, uh, not really worried about that. Christ kingdom, well, he'll work it out. What's the point of remaining? I'll just check out.
code. Nobody remains. Remember what Jesus said when he gave that very hard discourse in John chapter 6, you know, about drinking his blood and eating his flesh? Remember what? All the disciples left. They stood. It was a hard saying. Who could understand it? They turned around. There was 12 standing there. He's like, well, remember what Jesus said? He said, you won't go to. You won't go to. Remember what Peter said? Lord, to who shall we go? You only have the words of life. You only have the words of life. We can't go anywhere. So we're going to remain. We're going to follow you. We're going to do your will. We're going to bring glory to your name. We're going to fulfill fruit and produce fruit for the kingdom because we're plugged into you. We're abiding in you. That's where we're going to be. Because we can't be nowhere else. That's the time we're living in, brothers and sisters. We got to remain in Christ because there's no words else to go. We remain. Stay. Right? No words else. He only has words of God. So, Father, we give you glory and thanksgiving for your word and truth. Oh, God, it's so simple to live as Christ dies, gain. Nevertheless, to remain in the flesh is needful for the church, for the kingdom of God, for the good of others. Lord, it's so simple, but it's so profound as well. God, we have a, a tremendous duty, a tremendous privilege. It's a privilege and a duty to serve you and obey you and bear fruit. And Lord, to edify and exhort and build up one another in the faith So, Lord Jesus, please fill us with your spirit. Help us, Lord, to magnify and glorify your great name. And, Lord, help us to live in you, to live as Christ. And Lord, whenever you call us home, we're gaining it all. But we have to wait until you call us. Lord, I don't know if there's someone here this morning maybe who's been thinking about ending their life, about suicide for some time now, Lord. I don't know. You do? Oh, God, if they're going to try to hit the escape hatch and, and just end it all, Lord, would they just now say, okay, Lord, I'll be like Paul. I'm going to crucify myself. I want to be crucified with Christ. And I don't want to live anymore. I'll let you live through me. If I'm thinking about ending my life through a horrible, terrible, sinful way, Lord, I, I don't want to do that, but I do want to end my life in a God-honoring, Christ-exalting, biblical way. I want to be crucified with Christ. So that I no longer live, but Christ lives within me. Won't you make that commitment now? Won't you be crucified with Christ now? Won't you end your struggles and submit to Christ so that you no longer live but Christ lives in you? To live as Christ. God, you've heard everyone's prayer. Thank you for your great truth. Thank you that you are with us, Lord Jesus. You set the example. You've run the race before us.
And you're seated now at the right hand of the Father, and you encourage us in our race. And you're crying out to us, don't quit. Keep going. I'm with you. I remain with you. I'm not abandoned you. You died with me, and now you live in me. And I live in you. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, we needed this today. I know I did. And I know your people did. We thank you for your holy word. We thank you for your truth that sanctifies us, builds us, and exhorts us. And we pray now, as we have the invitation, Lord, if there's anyone who just needs to come up and pray, say, Lord, I want to die to myself. Maybe they want to make that public. They just want to nail the altar. Whatever, Lord, may you have your way. May you be glorified in all things. For we pray these things, Lord Jesus, in your holy name. Amen. Please stay.